All right, Bill, you can get started. Okay, thank you very much, Kinsey, and welcome everybody. Kinsey is one of our Common Ground team. My name is Bill Cope. I've been involved in this conference um, since it began. In this strange Zoom COVID universe, um, I'm an Australian, but I work at the University of Illinois, but I'm actually in Greece at the moment. So, um, um, uh, so that explains a little bit about, uh, about the background and where I am. And, and um, I welcome everybody from uh, all over the world into this session. So the first thing I, I wanna say is yes, we are recording this. You, you got the message at the beginning. Um, and that will be for people who, because of time zone or some other reason, can't join us live in the session. So this is a, a kind of a session that we normally have uh, at the beginning of the conference as a kind of a welcome reception. But in fact, it's the, it's become a bit of a, a crossover between a welcome reception and a, uh, a formal opening of the conference. So um, it's great to see everybody. Let me say that we actually have, and I've just got the numbers here, we have 264 participants in this conference, which is incredible. I don't know whether we ever had that number uh, in the days when we were in person, to be quite frank. Well, I think we might have had that number. It was This has always been a conference that people are kind of interested in um, for a, a number of reasons. And we have over 200 pieces of digital media. I think some of the digital media is still floating in at the moment. So um, uh, and what I'd like to say to everybody is please um, look at the digital media, but but always uh, leave a comment, right? And, um, you know, in many ways, we would all like to be at an in-person conference now. That's what we've been used to. But um, the interesting thing is that, that you know, normally at an in-person conference, one or two people can ask a question at the end, then it's over because of time constraints. But we have no constraints in the world about you folks commenting and um, interacting with each other. And a little note, by the way, is that when you interact in a session, it triggers an email um, to the, uh, a reminder email to the presenter. So, you know, please go in there, please look at what people have done and talk about it. Um, now, I know you won't be able to look at uh, over 200 <laughs> um, sessions, um, but also another advantage is that, that, that you won't feel as if you're going to one session and missing something else you wanna see. So um, it'll give you much more choice as well. So um, um, I, just a little bit about myself, I work at the University of Illinois. Um, I'm an Australian originally. This conference has been running now for, I've lost track of the number of times, Kinsey, you might be able to remind me, um, for, for a, a, a fair while. And one of the reasons for the conference is that so much of what we do in the social sciences becomes tracked into disciplinary silos, if you like. Um, uh, around particular methodologies or particular areas of content. And what we wanted to do in this conference is actually have a cross-disciplinary um, uh, conversation um, because most of the issues that are important to us in the world these days um, can't be tackled just simply within a single methodology or a single discipline. So that was kind of the, the motivating idea behind the conference. and. Um, you know, one of the legacies of the conference, by the way, which you folks all have access to, is a quite thriving journal and book series. So um, you folks have access to all of that, and we would like you to go there. You know, I mean, what the the idea of the conference is is to build a kind of a uh, a legacy body of knowledge, peer reviewed knowledge, which can be then be uh, accessed by everybody. And one thing we we ask everybody is please you know, use that and cite each other. You know, this is you know in academe one of the forms of recognition is that other people have found an idea of yours to be of, of sufficient help to be worthy of citation. So please uh, access that material and, um, and uh, uh, you know, use it as much as you can. So um, I, in the, that, that's just sort of by way of a brief introduction to the conference and to the methodology, if you like. I might say, you know, we've been forced into this online environment by the this um, COVID crisis, which is um, terrible in a whole lot of respects, but the world won't be the same afterwards and nor will the work that we do with these conferences. So going forward, our plan is to have blended conferences where even if you're attending in person, we're going to ask you, look, it would be great if you could put in a piece of digital media or video of your presentation for those who can't attend. Uh, and of course, those who are not able to attend because you know travel or there's a thousand reasons why you can't attend in person. 
um, will still be able to participate. So even going forward, when we get back into in-person conferences, and honestly, who knows when that's going to be, um, that we will um, be moving forward with a, a blended model. Um, so that's the legacy of COVID for the work that we do. So anyhow, it's really encouraging to see so many people here and so many people uh, logging in, connected, uploading digital media. And I might say, by the way, we've been really, really impressed by the amount of digital interaction, to be quite frank. So we have a, we have meters which are, uh, are kind of, this is the web where you can count these things. Um, and um, it's been, you know, there's been a lot of interaction, which is kind of very, very encouraging. And I want to encourage you to be part of that interaction now as we go forward. So that's my um, brief introduction. I also want to introduce you to Kinsey Duncan, who's um, up in the top left hand corner of my Zoom tiles. I've got it in gallery view, but um, I don't know where you can move these tiles around. So thank you, Kinsey, for the incredible work that you do. And also um, Tamara, who's part of our Spanish language team based in Granada in Spain. So they do an amazing amount of work um, um, in, you know, there's logistically even though this is um, uh, purely virtual, there's a lot of work in pulling these conferences together. So thank you very much to them. So what I want to do now is I want to hand over to our virtual hosts. We would very much likely like to be at Oxford Brooks University um, at the moment. Um, but unfortunately, we, we, um, we, for the obvious reasons, we haven't been able to be. Um, so the first person I'd like to introduce is um, Christina, uh, Goddeskin and Christina, you know, mention a bit about yourself as well. Um, I, you know, I know you're going to do a welcome, but tell us a bit about yourself as well. So over to you, Christina. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Christina Goddickson. Uh, I'm the head of School of Architecture here at Oxford Brookes University. Um, and yeah, if I do start with a little bit about myself, I suppose, since I'm being encouraged, I'm originally from Denmark. Uh, I'm sat uh, in my neighbor's flat uh, in London uh, just because I've got three year olds downstairs and I, I, I thought I wouldn't uh, get the peace and quiet to do this if they were around my feet. Um, so uh, I've been in London and uh, for over 20 years and I have worked at Brooks for 10 years nearly now uh, and I'm very pleased to see uh, this conference uh, come about and that we're you know fortunate enough to host it uh, it's it's a you know it, it, it's just uh, you know really something that we're very proud to do uh, and very pleased to so welcome to everyone I think you're going to have some uh, exciting days ahead there's lots uh, on offer uh, as Bill just mentioned and um the, the thing about, I guess, all the themes or the, the umbrella theme, as well as the more detailed themes that you, you, you're kind of going to engage with in the next few days, they are very close to the work that we do here at Brooks uh, and something that we've been championing and engaging with for, you know, a, a very long time. Uh, but it's also interesting that perhaps in, in this past year, uh, some of these themes have come personally close to us, uh, you know, in a way that we couldn't have uh, imagined. So I think there is so much to say and so much to be learnt. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, this conference is just, uh, you know, an incredible uh, vehicle for that. And I'm glad it's got such a long history as well, uh, and that many more will come and, and hopefully next time we can ho host it in person. Um, so the thing is that you know conferences they don't kind of come about all by themselves so I do want to thank a few people and I would like to thank uh, Martin Gallant uh, for all the hard work you know being the research ne network chair and uh, Elizabeth Costa and her team who you know do all the behind the scenes production work uh, and of course Scott Swartz and Julia Vedo um, that are going to be your conference hosts. I mean, the the amount of time and effort that's gone into putting this together, you know, you can never tell, um, you know, when you see it happening, uh, but it's it's in a tremendous effort and it's been a long time uh, underway. And so thank you very much for everything that you've done. Um, my grandmother used to say uh, that, uh, you know, be like a duck, you know, on the surface, look calm and cool. 
uh, but under the surface paddle like hell. And I think that's a bit like what a conference is like, you know, on the surface, it looks cool and calm. And, and in this instance, we can't even tell how overheated we all are um, because it's digital. But I think, you know, it's all because there's a lot of people putting a lot of effort in. And so thank you for that. Uh, and I think that's probably all I really want to say, uh, you know, enjoy yourselves. And then I'm going to pass on to Scott uh, first. Hello. Um, so I would also like to add my uh, welcome to this event. Um, and I definitely want to thank Brooks for uh, Christina and our Dean Jota and Nigel Crook, who is our um, research lead at the in the faculty for all of their support in, in helping us get this thing put together. And especially when we had to pivot online, the team has been really good about helping us. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm the postgraduate program lead, which is a very British way of saying that I, I'm in charge of the postgraduate program here at Oxford Brooks, which is basically a master's of architecture and six independent standalone master's courses that cover the gamut of things from this uh, from development and emergency practice to our international architectural regeneration to sustainability to humanitarian action and peace building we really are very embedded in this ethos of interdisciplinary practice. And people sometimes wonder why things like um, humanitarian, uh, humanitarian practices are embedded in a school of architecture rather in a, than in a school of say social sciences or something like that. And the answer really is, is, is that architecture is a nexus of how we design the future. And our ethos here at Brooks is we want to be building the world where your children and your grandchildren will be living in. And that means not just addressing the built environment through architecture, but addressing the environment socially, economically, and through all of our practices. Um, we have six, or we have, sorry, five, research groups here in the school. We have a research group called the Center for Development and Emergency Practice, CINDEP, which is a world leading research group that it works with various organizations such as UNITAR and other groups from the UN and other NGOs, Red Cross, Red Crescent, all across the globe to address issues of pressing need globally around humanitarian action, peace building. Um, we, work with, we work with stakeholders in Palestine and help refugee crisis in Syria. So CINDEP really is at the center, pardon the pun, of the, of the humanitarian practice world, working deeply with a lot of these global institutions. Next, we have the Low Carbon Building Group um, headed by Dr. Raja Gupta, which is sitting on the cutting edge of sustainability practice and looking at issues around post-occupancy evaluation and areas such as that, recognizing that sustainability is a much more holistic process than just slapping a few solar panels on a roof, putting in some passive cooling and calling it good. It's really about rethinking the entire way we live and interact with the built environment and the natural environment. We also in parallel have a second research group looking at sustainability, which is the building engineering group. And this group works with various organizations such as, for example, Tata Steel, looking at ways to do the things that we do better, greener, more humane, more, more caring about the planet. Then we've got our um, culture, our um, place, place, culture, identity. That is, is a mouthful to say. Um, research group, which looks at issues around vernacular architecture, 
regeneration, rehabilitation. And I'm going to allow Julia to say more on, on her because she's part of that group. So she'll address some of those things because they're central to this conference. And then we have the design theory practice research group, which looks at not only design and architecture, but also again about architecture and wellness well-being. We've got researchers who are working on creating spaces that are better for neurodivergent individuals or understanding the intersection of sexual violence and the way we make our cities. So again, in all of our research, we try to reach out across disciplines because we recognize that staying siloed in a world where we think about architecture as just mere buildings entirely misses the point of what we do, which is creating a world to live in. So on that note, uh, I will be, by the way, doing a plenary speech on Thursday, and I'll talk more about my own back history in that. So a little teaser to get you to want to come to my plenary session. And I'm going to turn it over to Julia, who will talk about resilience and our special theme this year. Thank you, Scott. Um, thanks, everyone else. Hello, um, really warm welcome. I'll say something briefly about myself and then more about resilience, as Scott said. Um, my name is Julia Wedel. I'm originally from Germany, have been in the UK some 25 years now, first studying to become an architect, and then I practiced in London with the sort of green and social among the architectural practitioners. Um, realized very quickly that there's so much in how people behave and how we try to do sustainable architecture that's very tricky. So I came to Brooks some 15 years ago to do a master's and then a PhD in Hub State ever since. Um, nowadays, I look after the master's course in architectural regeneration and development, and um, also some of the resilience research in the school, which I'll say a little bit more about in a minute. Um, primero, uh, quiero extender un bienvenido muy cordial a todos los um, participantes del mundo um, español o hablante español. Estamos encantados de tener tantas conferencias dado en español y dentro del Colegio de Arquitectura tenemos varios proyectos de investigación o de educación en Latinoamérica, Perú, Colombia. También trabajamos bastante con varias universidades en España. No me da el tiempo para contarles todos, pero quiero, quiero que nos conectemos en varias formas estos días y pues muy bienvenido. Right, I will come back to English and share my screen. Oh, the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Could that be made available so I can show some of the work, please? Yes, you. you should be a co-host now. Try again? You should be a co-host now. Yeah, I'm sure you can share your screen. Okay, thank you. Is that visible? Yes. To everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. So I wanted to speak a little bit um, about the resilience research and teaching that we do in the architecture. Obviously, the theme of resilience is crisis is central to this particular conference. Um, and on here is my favorite post on resilience back from um, when the floods in New, York, New Orleans happened. And that poster really touches on this issue that resilience is really a highly contested and potentially quite um, complicated concept that is really open to abuse and misuse. So this here says that it says, don't call me resilient, because calling me resilient can, can be an excuse for doing more to me. And this speaks mainly to government governments abusing this idea of resilience. So that really sets the theme very nicely for how we try to look at resilience within the School of Architecture. Um, I'm just going to show a couple of groups and a standalone um, resilience projects, and I'll have the links to all of these on the last slide if anyone wants to follow up. So this is um, within SENDEP, um, a group on um, inclusive recovery and development, and that's led by my colleague, Dr. Supriya Akaka. Supriya will be presenting some of her research during these days, so definitely look out for that presentation if this is in the field of what you're interested in. So this particular um, research is concerned with how social factors factors influence vulnerability and resilience. And they look particularly at the affirmation of rights in de development processes um, and emergencies, especially in the context of natural ha hazards. So the various um, projects within that group really look at how social identities of people, namely gender, age, 
particularly disability, quite a few disability projects in that group, race and ethnicity and their intersectionality contribute to the experience of resilience or lack of resilience. Um, the second um, research group I wanted to point out to you, if resilience is your thing, is um, the Conflict, Humanitarian Action and Peace Building Group, led by my colleague Dr. Brigitte Picard. And this group um, considers the role of transformative resilience. So resilience not as an end game, but as a process that can help development processes in the long term, and particularly within humanitarian programming. So they work with local organizations to better understand how actions for transformative resilience can be integrated in contexts of conflict. So that's all on our website as well. Um, and there's a particular um, project in Colombia, in Colombia, they're an observatory of violence and resilience, um, that is a long-term longitudinal data collection project um, also run by the school. Um, lastly, another project that's a few years old now, um, where I looked at resilience to resource scarcity in volatile environments. And this particular study was based on this premise that um, I looked at water scarcity, and we often look at um, resilience or resource scarcity from quite a technological or governance point of view. So this was an ethnographic study that sought to understand the lived experience of resilience and how that lived experience is shaped by the wider socio-political context. Um, in this case, um, the work took place in an informal uh, settlement in Lima, Peru. Okay. Um, and then I really wanted to highlight um, what we do with our students. We're at Oxford Brookes University. We are a teaching instit institution for those who know the UK um, university landscape. Um, and while we all do research, that research um, feeds heavily into the teaching that we do. So I thought this would also be a good moment um, to showcase some of what we're trying to do with resilience teaching, because we believe we're sort of trying to do something that is, isn't happening in any other architecture schools, at least in the UK at the moment. So um, the two courses that we run, or two of the courses that point, uh, Scott has pointed out, the MA International Architectural Regeneration and Development and the MA Development and Emergency Practice, they're really courses that we offer to our postgraduate architecture students as well. And they are courses that work with real life problems. They are very research led, so they try and understand um, a context, complex concept from a research perspective, and they're resource sensitive, not just in the sort of sustainability and environmental sense of the view, but looking at human resources and people. So these two courses really set the scene for looking at real life problems and then teaching students how we respond to these as architects. Um, so to illustrate what we do a little bit, just a couple of examples from recent student projects in very different contexts. The um, project at the top there is a student who looked, uh, we, we visited the Taj Mahal in India and the informal settlements around there. And that particular student um, developed a waste recycling center, um, looking at the heritage context, but also looking at the real world problem of waste recycling and won, won an external prize for that, which is obviously and then a project from this year, because of COVID, we've not been able, obviously, to visit anywhere in person, but we've had a very successful virtual field trip with some partners in Nablus in Palestine. And that was a particularly interesting project that looked at a former power station, which was once upon the symbol of independence for that area of Nablus, but was then a couple of decades ago taken um, over by Israeli governance, and Nablus is now again energy dependent on Israel. So that particular student developed a very sensitive project looking at this dependence and also at food insecurity developed a proposal for a honeybee research center. So just to give an idea of what we try to do as architects in, in the realm of education. Um, and then for the first time this year, we're trying to bring in our theoretical research and the theoretical um, uh, modules that we teach on resilience into the design studio, because after all, we're trying to educate architects to be um, practitioners for the future world. And um, this is really based around the idea that the, the concept of sustain sustainability is possibly being displaced um, or at very least complemented by the concepts of well-being and resilience. So while we were always designing sustainable buildings and looked at sustainable cities, it's occurring to us that maybe the concept of resilience um, provides a better umbrella because it captures much more um, unknown context, volatile futures, which is very much the world that we're inhabiting now and the world that we need our students to be designing in. So in the design studio that we've run just for one year now, 
um, we teach the students resilience theory and critiques. We then ask them to appraise complex urban sites and with, to identify potential for resilience. And we then um, ask them to design an architectural project um, that will contribute to a more resilient world. Now, just again, for because we're architects, we like pictures brought a couple of examples of how we do that in architectural design. So this particular student looked at the very complex literature on resilience, we had some lectures on that, and she developed this diagram for herself to understand what do we need to be looking at if we want to design for resilience. Um, we then took another virtual field trip, this time to Nouakchott in Mauritania, and she applied her framework, refined it and adapted it to understand this very complex um, context of the city that is regularly encroached and lost to a sand dune, experiences um, temporary flooding and has, you know, a host of other complex urban challenges. Um, and lastly, then she developed a design inter intervention that addressed all these projects and brought them together in an architectural design. If you are a um, resilience educator, if you uh, resilience research or crisis research feeds into your teaching, we'd love to connect with you because we think there's a lot of potential in feeding our resilience research into the teaching um, of the well, future practitioners or future researchers that we're all educating. Thank you very much. Well, what a wonderful set of examples of, um, you know, the, the, the importance of interdisciplinary work. So, you know, um, it's sort of, it shouldn't be a surprise hearing architects speaking in these cross-disciplinary ways and they're, they're ways we all need to speak now. So thank you very much. So um, we're gonna hand over now to our um, Research Network Chair, uh, Masa, Masang Galant. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, hello to everyone. My name is Martin Gallant. Uh, I'm the chair of the network, and it is my privilege, honor, and a great pleasure to welcome everybody very warmly to the 16th conference of the Interdisciplinary Social Sciences Research Network. Uh, uh, this is my first time when I'm taking part in opening our annual conference uh, since I'm a new uh, chair of the network. So uh, allow me to introduce myself with a few uh, words. Uh, I'm a sociologist uh, and uh, I work as an assistant professor at the Jagiellonian University in Kraków in Poland. It's, it's Poland, not Holland. And this is the most uh, eastern part of the uh, European uh, uh, Union. And I lecture at the Institute of European uh, Studies, uh, which was probably uh, the pioneer of uh, interdisciplinarity in social sciences at my university and in my country in Poland. I, I still believe that the, our department is uh, uh, the most uh, interdisciplinary interdisciplinary uh, uh, unit at my uh, university. I'm also a member of the Polish Academy of Sciences and Arts, where I'm involved in its most interdisciplinary division. It's called the Commission on Threats of Civilization. This commission consists of representatives of natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities. So it is a kind of hardcore level of interdisciplinarity. Um, I started uh, my collaboration with the Common Grant uh, Research Network three years ago in Granada, and two years ago I was cooperating with Professor Rafał Soborski uh, while organizing a conference uh, in Kraków uh, in Poland, and now I have become a virtual chair of the, of the network. Uh, uh, Bill has already mentioned about uh, our uh, 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 journals, and I'm also editor in chief of the interdisciplinary social sciences uh, journal uh, collection. For some delegates, it will be just a reman reminder, but I think that for some others, that would be a, a good introduction. Introduction. The collection consists of four excellent uh, journals uh, indexed by Scopus and other similar uh, agencies. 
let me remind the titles of those four uh, excellent journals. The first one is the International Journal of Interdisciplinary Civic and Political Studies. The second one is the International Journal of Interdisciplinary Cultural Studies. The third one is the International Journal of Interdisciplinary Educational Studies. And the fourth one, the International Journal of Interdisciplinary Social and Community Studies. So uh, just uh, I'm talking about it because uh, uh, for many people, uh, 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 it probably uh, uh, would be good to know that we are waiting for uh, the uh, papers, articles, the effects of the research. We will be happy to uh, assess and uh, publish uh, uh, their work and uh, uh, please do consider uh, these opportunities if you want to contribute to our academic uh, community and of course your professional, uh, professional record. Uh, another thing I want to mention is the next year and we have already uh, scheduled uh, our next year uh, conference. We will be hosted by the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens in uh, uh, 21st, 23rd July of 2022. And prelimi preliminary, we uh, have agreed that we will create two opportunities uh, to take part in, in this conference. So for those who would be ready and if circumstances uh, allow, uh, we will be able I do believe that we will be able to meet in person. And, but for those who won't be able, for many reason, obvious reasons, it will be also a possibility to uh, 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 join in uh, via uh, uh, online uh, 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 technology like Zoom, etc. So uh, this is, uh, 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 I will also uh, mention uh, the title of this uh, conference and it's uh, titled At the Crossroads of Paradigms, Considering Heterodoxy in the Social Sciences. We are going through the pandemic, but uh, the world has not fallen asleep, uh, quite the opposite. The world is changing in profound ways and we would like to reflect on these uh, changes uh, uh, through uh, uh, this interdisciplinary uh, approach in Athens, one of the cradles of uh, humanity and uh, uh, civilizations. Uh, I want to thank two teams of wonderful people, one in Oxford and one in Urbana uh, Champagne. I, I, I was thinking about the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, conference this year and uh, uh, um, I thought to myself that it must have been a strike of genius while uh, uh, working on the idea of the conference because uh, let me remind that, uh, that the Oxford team came up with this idea long before the uh, uh, pandemic started. So uh, uh, <laughs> you, you, you are prophetic guys. Maybe you, you could also come up with some more optimistic uh, prophecies, <laughs> but it, it, it's really, uh, really uh, absolutely a, a coincidence of circumstances or a strike of genius. Uh, if we take it into consideration uh, uh, the fact that because of the pandemic, all of us are equipped with some knowledge on how to cope with crises, then you might think about the conference like an almost generational experience. And I want to wish you, it is also very fruitful and rewarding uh, experience, not only uh, 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 generational in terms of the circumstances. Thank you, thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you very, very much for that, Marcel. Okay, so now we're gonna hand over to, um, to Tatiana, who's going to speak um, to the folks in the room who are uh, in, the, in the Spanish language group. So th for those who are the English language folks, um, this is a bilingual conference and has been for a number of years now. So uh, I'm sorry, not Tatiana, Tamara. Over to you, Tamara. Thank you very much, Will. I will switch to Spanish to just welcome all our Spanish-speaking participants. 
Buenos días, buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos a la recepción de bienvenida que se celebra hoy un día previo al Congreso. Es un gran honor y un auténtico placer a, a darles una cálida bienvenida a todos de parte de nuestro equipo uh, de Common Ground Research Networks en la lengua española. Me llamo Tamara y formo parte del comité organizador uh, de este 16 Congreso Internacional de Ciencias Sociales e Interdisciplinares. Este es el segundo año consecutivo que el presente Congreso se celebra en modalidad online debido a la situación sanitaria en todo el mundo. Nos hubiera gustado verles a todos uh, estos días, uh, pues los días cuando se celebra el Congreso del 21 al 23 de julio en la uh, Oxford Brookes University en el Reino Unido, pero debido a la situación, como he dicho antes, no uh, ha podido ser. Uh, en el, congre el Congreso cuenta con 264 participantes que exponen sus trabajos en español y en inglés. Es decir, se trata de un Congreso bastante grande. Uh, por lo cual quiero darles las gracias a todos los participantes, docentes, estudiantes de grado, de máster, de doctorado, los investigadores de posgrado e investigadores independientes por haber apostado en esta edición virtual del Congreso, por haber seguido las instrucciones para subir su contenido digital a la plataforma CG Scholar, por, uh, para compartir los hallazgos de sus trabajos con los compañeros de todo el mundo y para contribuir a la divulgación del conocimiento científico, que es muy importante para nosotros. Uh, esta red de investigación de ciencias sociales interdisciplinares fue fundada en el año 2006 y ya cuenta con una trayectoria de 14 años. Dentro de esta red se intenta abarcar un gran abanico de temas, como puede ser estudios sociales comunitarios, estudios políticos, estudios cívicos, estudios culturales globales del medio ambiente, estudios organizacionales a ciencias de la educación y comunicación. El tema destacado del Congreso de 2021 uh, es las oportunidades de la crisis, resiliencia y cambio en la historia del mundo. Este tema destacado tratará los uh, temas que están en primer plano en el siglo XXI, como la resolución de conflictos, la acción humanitaria, la pacificación, derechos humanos y resiliencia comunitaria. Uh, dado que las presiones de la emergencia climática, las nuevas formas de conflictos, el creciente nacionalismo, la escasez de recursos y la campaña, las campañas de desinformación continúan incrementándose, necesitaremos adaptarnos para navegar por las nuevas estructuras sociales y comprender un nuevo paisaje cultural. Como se ha dicho antes, pero en la lengua inglesa, uh, ya... Uh, quiero, bueno, uh, antes de uh, acabar, quiero confirmarles que el congreso del año que viene uh, se va a celebrar en Atenas, en Grecia, en la sede que es la Universidad Nacional y Capodistríaca de Atenas, los días 21, 23 de julio de 2022. Ya está abierta la convocatoria de propuestas de trabajo y por mi parte espero que disfruten del contenido digital de este congreso, espero que asistan a los eventos en directo y participen de forma activa para sacar el máximo provecho de estas jornadas. Muchísimas gracias por su atención y bienvenidos a todos. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. William. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, Tamara. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you for that. Well, look, we've got um, still 19 minutes left in this session, so thank you everyone for being precise, uh, concise. I mean, and look, I've got a suggestion for the 19 minutes. We have 63 people here at the moment, um, and what I was going to suggest is if each of you would like to, each of you that's presenting, that is. So I know not everybody's presenting, but if you'd like to go to your page and get the link for your page and put in the chat the link and the title of your um, of your presentation. Um, it might, this is an opportunity for us to sort of very quickly, 20 seconds each, 15 seconds each, if you want to, if you start putting them there in the, in the chat, I'll, I'll call on you and you can just say where you're from and what you're doing. It'd be interesting to get a little flavor of uh, who the people are at the conference and for you, know, you to get a chance to hear each other's voices live briefly so we what's 18 minutes now we've got 18 minutes left so in the 18 minutes we can hear some people's voices as well so um tabitha has a session there on people of peace and transnationality united nations police officers and that's the link tabitha would you like to just say where you're from very very briefly half a day um i'm from the island of guam and tuning in at 2 42 a.m here 
Wow. <laughs> Bravo. Amazing. Well, yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm glad you were first. And Patricia, you're doing um, implementing social equity thinking into an engineering sector project, now it's a curriculum project. That's Patricia Backer. I'd like to say hello to everyone, Patricia. Hi, how you doing? Um, it's only it's nine in the morning here, which is early, but not as early as two in the morning. So uh, I'm in charge of a senior project class for engineering, and we have integrated social and global issues into the class. So engineering students have more direct relationship and linking of their projects to social equity. So that's what this project's about. Wonderful, excellent. And then um, Richard uh, Valesco, Richard. Hi, half a day. I am also from Guam, but I'm currently living in the state of Iowa. Um, it is 11.45 a.m. here, so not sleepy or anything like that, but I'm glad to be here and nice to meet everyone. Great, lovely. And Claudia is there, and I don't think you've given us your topic yet, Claudia. Ah, a dialectic journey from anthropology to ethnography to achieve inclusive design and planning. Um, oh, no, sorry, I've got it mixed up. That's not Claudia. Claudia, are you there? And you'd like to just say hello and give us sorry, um, sorry. your Sorry, sorry. Yes, topic. yes. I'm here. My purpose um, sorry, sorry. is in Spanish. It's about the process of acculturation um, between natives and Latin American migrants in, in community context in Barcelona, in Spain. Oh, wonderful. And by the way, for the Spanish participants, free, feel free just simply to mention your work in Spanish. I don't want to be excluding people because I'm in English. So just jump in in Spanish anytime and that will be fine. Um, the next one is Sanchez, a dialectic journey from anthropology to ethnography to achieve inclusive design and planning. Sanchez? Uh, this is me. My name is Sanchez and the rest is my family name, Shaveri. Okay, so... Uh, I'm currently a postdoctoral researcher at Queen's University Belfast, but uh, in my background I'm an architect and urban designer, and I'm working about age and gender inclusiveness in city centres, and my presentation is more or less a comparative study of two case studies, Tehran and Belfast. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and the next one we have is... Um, um, sorry, I'm just going down my chat because I've got a lot of things happening in the window. Is um, Alicia Sanchez Oritz? Um, and you feel free to introduce yourself in Spanish. Tamara, would you like to mention that one? Um, I'm sorry. Um, William, what should I do? I'm sorry. Oh, just mention the title um, uh, of the, the uh, Alicia Sanchez Oritz. No, mm -hmm. no, I'm only up to um, Alicia Sanchez Oritz. Um, Alicia Sanchez, uh, el título de su trabajo. Yeah, uh, she has problems with the microphone. Um, okay. Well, welcome anyhow um, there, um, uh, Alicia. Um, the next one I have is Salma Cossens. Um, again, feel free to introduce yourself in Spanish. I will do it in English. <laughs> so, hello, oh, my <laughs> hello, my name is Salima Cossens, and um, I'm he hello from Mexico. So, my um, my project, I'm a doctoral student at UNAM, uh, the, the National University of Mexico, and um, my project is a, a critique of international relations, and I'm actually uh, reconstructing um, the Mesoamerican international system. Great, very good, important thing to be doing. And then uh, Claudia Saldivia, and again, feel free to uh, mention it either in Spanish or in English. Okay, um, my work is, is part of my doctoral thesis um, about the process of uh, psychological acculturation between natives and Latin American migrants in community context because the community context is as less um, investigated in, in, this, in this context. Yes, yes. And I'm a student, a PhD of okay. social psychology in Barcelona, in University of Barcelona. 
Wonderful. Okay, and welcome. Um, the next one I have is Seth uh, Amorfa. Hi, everybody. Yeah, my name is Seth. I come from Ghana, but I live in Estonia. Um, fortunately for me, it's only eight p.m. Almost eight p.m. now. So it's on Tuesday. So um, I am having a good time. My topic is about. Um, I, I'm looking at how emerging NGOs are contributing or otherwise in development developing countries. We are not looking at humanitarian. We are looking at development cooperation. So that is what I'll be talking about uh, tomorrow at the, at the, at the uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, or Ernesto uh, Cordero, planting the seeds of gratitude, corporate social responsibility and quality of life. Um, would you like to mention where you are and yeah, good afternoon. When 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 I started as uh, amigo y amigas, I'm I'm based in Ottawa, the capital city of Canada, and I'm presenting a study in a farm far away in the Asian country, and try to determine the uh, the CSR activities. And my title is planting the seeds of gratitude from the CSR activities done by corporate on the quality of life of the beneficiaries. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a PhD BA business administration graduate and uh, currently a doctorate research uh, scholar here at the University of the Ottawa and St. Paul University. Thank you and uh, uh, Mabuhay. Wonderful, okay. The next one I have is um, Losfina Bato, uh, Intangible Culture, Way to Create Societal Change. Good evening to you all. Josefina, Josephine, you can say it. It's Romanian, actually, I. Um, I am from Romania and I'm visiting professor in Baku in Azerbaijan. Uh, and I teach uh, Romanian language, culture and civilization, and everything that I do deals with uh, uh, multiculturalism, interdisciplinarity, because when we teach about culture, actually, I, uh, I cover all the, uh, all the fields. And uh, my, my paper will be about uh, how uh, during the communist period, uh, Romanian writers actually survived uh, with their uh, writing. So if you're interested, you can, you can see it tomorrow. Thank you all. Interesting. Wonderful. Um, Rajitas. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, going to uh, be presenting a paper on the quest for neoliberalism, challenges to peace and security and, um, in India. And uh, my paper focuses on how neoliberalism is affecting the current PM Modi's uh, strategies to dealing with issues found within the country. And it looks at how neoliberalism is one prominent factor, but also things that developed into the uh, neoliberalism framework and how that affects the uh, issues that are playing out today within the state. Thank you. Thank you, Rajit. Um, Katia Malena Martinez Heredia. Feel free to speak to your silo in Spanish or English, whichever you're more comfortable with. In both. Thank you very much. My name is Katia Martinez Heredia. Um, I'm teaching in the Atlantic University in Barranquilla, Colombia. My investigation is titled Globalization as a Context of Resignification of Socioeconomic and Sociocultural Condition in the Ishamana community, Guayu Nation. Um, the, the objective in, the, in this investigation is understand the process of resignification of the pre and post capitalist or socioeconomic and social culture condition of the Ishamana community, Guayu Nation 
in the context of globalization, attending uh, to the categories of agriculture communities and the common land property, community organization and social system. Thank you very much. Okay, and the next one I have is Robert Greenstreet, Contradictions in Creativity and Copyright. Robert. Okay, maybe Robert is unable to, um, to say anything just now. So I'll go on to the next one, which is um, um, Jesus Hernandez, Space, Border and Literature, Territory and Ter Territoriality in um, Literature del Norte de Mex uh, Mexico. Thank you very much. I will be um, presenting a paper on uh, the analysis of, of concepts um, related to geography, uh, political sciences and um, uh, social sciences uh, through the perspective of the represent literary representations uh, of Mexico, putting in the uh, focus the uh, cross-border uh, migrant in first person uh, in this uh, text, in these literary works. Uh, I am Mexican and I'm currently living in Poland uh, with V. Uh, just like Martin, uh, in the University of Wrocław. So not only are we all over the world, but we're already all over the world before we even connect with Zoom. So interesting that, isn't it? Um, so Thank the you. next one, if I can read it correctly, is Hector Guzman Cortino. Cortino. Sure. Eh, de la Universidad de la Cusana, soy maestro y mi investigación trata sobre cómo tuvimos que cambiar la enseñanza y aprendizaje en las aulas durante la pandemia. Tenemos 80.000 alumnos en 17 ciudades que cubre la Universidad de la Cusana y cómo fue cambiar los roles de la enseñanza y el aprendizaje a todo el híbrido. Nuestro proyecto fue a través de una, de una plataforma propia de la Universidad Brasiliana y implementamos la metodología Aula Invertida, donde cambiamos los roles de los maestros, los contenidos a enseñanza, preparar para aprender y, y el docente como facilitador. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next one I have is Helman Carrillo, designer of an associate model for the development of alternative economies within uh, a, with the gender approach in, in, from Colombia. Hola a todos, muy buenos días. Quisiera presentarme en español. Esta es mi investigación. He diseñado un modelo asociativo para el desarrollo de economías alternativas en el municipio de La Macarena, una de las zonas con una coyuntura socioeconómica, con una importancia y riqueza en materia de, bio, de biodiversidad muy importante, no solo para nuestro país, sino para el mundo. Eh, los invito a todos para que puedan ingresar, puedan dejar sus comentarios en esta presentación. Para todos, entonces, eh, I'm going to introduce me. My name is Germán Navarro Carrillo García. I am teacher of the Universidad Minuto de Dios in Colombia. And uh, the title of my investigation is Design of an Associative Model for the Development of Alternative Economics, a Gender Approach in the Municipality of La Macarena. It's a gender investigation. And I invite you uh, to everyone to know this study that I I do with uh, another uh, professors and students here in Colombia. And uh, we um, have the support of uh, teachers of Mexico also. Thank you so much. Okay, we have um, two more people in the list. Um, we'll, we'll get through them. Um, the first one is uh, Magali um, Sarabia. And then finally, Robert Greenstreet's got his 
um, computer working now. So let's go with um, Magali Sarabia first, and then we'll close off the session. Hi, uh, my name is Magali. Uh, Magali Valdez Arabia. I am a student doctorate of uh, social science at the University of Salamanca. Uh, my presentation is called What Happened in Venezuela with the state's political economy of or a, a country in crisis. Eh, mi ponencia se llama ¿Qué pasó en Venezuela con el Estado? Economía eh, política de un país en crisis. Eh, yo intento analizar eh, la formación del Estado venezolano, la transición a la Quinta República, que como conocemos es eh, la República eh, del, del gobierno bolivariano, y la agudización de la crisis que atraviesa el país a través de una eh, reconstrucción del contexto basada en estrategias de revisión documental. The following were eh, analysis, the formation of the Venezuelan states, the transition to the Fifth Republic, and the worsening of the crisis that the country is going through uh, a reconstruction of the context based on documentary review strategies. Thanks. Thank you very much. And then finally, Robert Greenstreet. Thank you, thank you, William. Uh, Bob Greenstreet, can you hear me? Good. Um, I'm a professor, Dean Emeritus. Yes, we can hear you well. Great. Professor Dean Emeritus at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and a graduate of Oxford Brookes University many years ago. Um, I'm making up for lost time after spending 34 years in academic administration, um, and I'm back from the dark side now. And uh, my focus is really the interface between the disciplines of architecture and law. And I'm very interested in the whole concept of originality, particularly how that affects future needs uh, in architecture and urban development, given the huge demands on our profession in the next few years. So uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to uh, explore ideas um, that I haven't to in the past, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the conference. So thank you. Wonderful. And, and um, look, thank you, everybody. It was great to hear people's voices. About half the participants are in the Spanish language stream and half in the English language stream. Uh, both streams are accessible to everybody, if those who are bilingual. Um, so it's wonderful to have everybody, uh, everybody here. Um, uh, just a couple of things I want to say in closing. Oh, firstly, I want to thank our hosts very, very much um, at Oxford Brooks. We, we promise we're going to get there in person sometime. Um, um, so thank you. But thank you very much for being such gracious hosts. As everyone can see, what a remarkably uh, interdisciplinary group we, we have here in terms of the themes and all the cross-cutting issues that, are, that that come up when we have this interdisciplinary lens on the work that we do. So, um, uh, but just again, I'll just repeat what I said earlier, please go to as many of these virtual sessions as you can. Uh, they'll be accessible forever, but we will, you know, during these days as the best time to be there and, and put in the comments, we try and keep people kind of roughly together in terms of synchronicity but also the comments will be open for another few weeks and the videos will be there as an indefinite archive for you people to go back. If you remember something, you want to look it up, um, you can go back to those digital media, whatever those media happen to be, uh, and have a look at those things. So please um, make the most of the fact that you can comment uh, and lots of people can comment on every session. Make the comments as substantive as possible because you know there's, there's space, there's time. We've got infinite amounts of space and time for you to comment, so please um, do that. And then also what follows is the the journal. So when you write stuff up formally, we're in what our concern is, is to build a, a formal body of knowledge out of this, this, this quite remarkable work. Um, uh, I just did a quick um, search on our uh, English language version of this journal. And in fact, there are over the years, this is the 16th time we've held this conference um, over the last 16 years. Um, there, we published 2,400 um, articles, an incredible body of knowledge. And if you go to advanced search, there's a very good search function there where you can find probably something that's exactly what you're looking for. And we've also published, um, I'm just looking at it now, we published 29 books, which, all of which you have access to um, electronically through um, your Scholar um, uh, login account. So anyhow, what can I say other than thank you to everybody? Thank you to the Common Ground folks who do such a 
an amazing job um, dealing with this amount of complexity and these logistics. Um, thank you to the host and thank you to everybody because this conference is really what you people bring to it. So I hope you have a very uh, productive few days um, or longer, you know, depending on how long you come back and view the material and, and make comments. So welcome everybody and um, thanks for being here and thanks for contributing. And we'll do our traditional Zoom wave. This is the pandemic world where we wave at the end of sessions. Someone was going to say something. Who was? Yeah, I was, who was just that going to jumping? add for anybody who wants assistance navigating the platform. There is a meeting in an hour or so where we will be covering how to use the platform and how to engage in it. So if you've got any questions, come to that. And uh, and our people, Tamara and Tamsin and Elizabeth and uh, Kelsey, did I get your name right? Sorry, I'm, I'm awful at this time of day. You're fine, Kinsey. Kinsey, sorry, Kinsey. We'll, we'll be there to answer any questions you've got. And please join our live plenary sessions. The plenary sessions are synchronous. So we would love to see you at, at the plenaries. Thank you. Sorry, yes, that's a good point. They're synchronous. And if it's a bad time for you, they're recorded as well. Julia, yes, go, go on, Is Julia. it worth mentioning that Jessica Butt's keynote has been moved to Friday afternoon um, on water security in Colombia? It is now at three o'clock on Friday before the other keynote, um, because that was advertised as differently until yesterday, I think. So those coming to hear about water security in Colombia, it's just before the other keynote from three to four on Friday. And the other two keynotes, I will be speaking Thursday. And then Friday, we have a special treat, Dr. Joseph Juhas, who is essentially the gentleman who invented the entire field of environmental psychology will be uh, lecturing on whatever he chooses to lecture on. <laughs> so thank you all. We really appreciate seeing you today. Yes, and folks, go, go to the program and calculate your own time. Yeah, everyone's in different time zones all over the world. So yes, the, the, please come to the plenaries live if you possibly can. It's very nice to have a, a live audience there. But you know there will be a recording made as well. So. And um, I, my greetings to the people listening to this recording too, by the way. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you again. And um, let's have a wonderful conference. Bye. Bye, everyone.